Julia Smith from Urban Days Farm. She's a farmer. With all my food adventures all over town all the time, I meet very interesting people, I meet interesting stories. And uh, Trevor Bird, who was one of my first speakers at Food Talks back in June, he was in my uh, pancake challenge back in November, and he created a dish called pulled pork pancakes, and with that, tomato jam. And he says to me, I got these tomatoes from this little farm in East Southeast Van from Urban Dicks Farm. I had no idea what he was talking about until I tasted this beautiful product. And then, you know, a little bit down the road, I meet Julia Smith at another event and find out those were her tomatoes grown on his, her farm that, had, that Trevor Bird made into his jam. So there's a whole story with this. So welcome, Julia Smith. So when Richard uh, asked me to come speak at this thing a couple months ago, I thought we'd better figure out what people say at these sorts of things. So I went and looked at some of the old videos from previous food talks, and so I understand there's kind of a format for talking to foodies about food and your experiences with food. And so it starts with, you know, sitting on my mother's knee and she's showing me some seeds, right? And we're going to go out in the garden plant these seeds together and work the land and she's going to teach me all of these valuable skills of how to grow your own food and connect with nature and then we're going to harvest these beautiful things that we grew together in the garden take them into the kitchen and there my grandmother's going to be there with all of her beautiful recipe books and she's going to teach me how to preserve this food how to bake delicious things and how to put things in jars so that we have food in the pantry over the winter and make pies and I'm going to grow up and always have this passion for food and know I'm always going to know that I want to be a farmer. This isn't that story. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> so I'm afraid I'm going to have to deviate from the standard food talks, foodie talk, and uh, tell you my story. I grew up in Oakville, Ontario. Uh, my partner that uh, I also farm with grew up in Paris in the, the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. We went to boarding school and rode horses. And had a very privileged upbringing, and my grandmother and my mother were just so happy that I would never have to struggle the way that they had. And I would never have to worry about where my food was coming from because, you know, we'd made it. So that's my background with food. Um, I never had to worry about my food, where my food was coming from. I never even knew how to cook a chicken a few years ago. Um, so I grew up and went to school and started a business and worked for 12 years and had a successful web development company and had a couple kids and always cared about the environment. And having children really kind of makes you feel a little insecure. And there's not a lot I can control in this world. I can't control the American economy. I can't control what's going on in Europe. I certainly can't control climate change. But one thing I can do is I can make sure I can feed my family. And I think that maybe this is why the only thing that's really growing in the agriculture sector right now is the number of women in it. Because here's a way I can take a little bit of control back. So how does this all relate to urban farming? So. Back, I started this business, which my heart really wasn't in, this web development, but it paid the bills and it kept my kids out of, high school, out of uh, daycare, not high school. Um, <laughs> kids can keep themselves out of high school. <laughs> but that served its purpose for a while, and then I had an opportunity to sell the business and go back to school. So I decided that what I would really like to do is for somebody to pay me to go rock climbing. So I went back to do a geology degree, which was excellent. I love earth science. I got to you know, be out in the environment and climbing. And, but after summer in the field, I realized I just wasn't going to be able to sell my soul to a mining company. I took a permaculture design course, and that pretty much derailed me. There would be no six-figure income for me, you know, flying off to remote places around the world and no long vacations. Um, I discovered that I really needed to live a life that was more in balance. So I started doing a little bit of backyard gardening. I had no idea what I was doing. I had this huge like, quarter acre lot. 
and it was just a nightmare. Found somebody on Craigslist that was looking for a little place to garden. So I was like, come on over, do whatever you want. And so she taught me a little bit, and I grew a bit of food. And the next year, I grew a whole bunch of food. And in trying to become more self-sufficient and more balanced and lead a more environmentally sustainably sustainable lifestyle, I grew a little too much food and did a couple little markets in the neighborhood. And suddenly, all these people wanted me to do that stuff more, grow more of this food, and we really want this stuff. So the next year, somehow, we had a farm, just a quarter acre lot in the uh, Right on the border between Dunbar and Caresdale, of all places. Very uh, unlikely neighborhood. And it's just really grown from there. Uh, people really want what we're doing and have been super supportive. So from the quarter acre lot, we soon had another half acre in Steveston. And we were farming that. And last year, we started our first CSA program which some of you are probably familiar with. We provide a harvest box of vegetables to last year we did 64 families. This year we've expanded and changed it a little bit. Uh, early last year I got a phone call and three acres in Burnaby fell into my lap. So we picked up the, uh, the family out of Dunbar and Harrisdale and moved out to a bog in Burnaby. There was a, a house, we hadn't actually seen the inside of it. Like, oh, it's gonna be so awesome, we can live on the land like real farmers. So we uh, leased this property for five years and it took a couple of months to get the, uh, the people that were living in the house out of the house. And once we got inside and realized pretty quickly that house was gonna have to go, uh, that changed the plans a little bit, but we were really invested in living on our land and so we bought a 34 foot RV. So we went from a 3,000 square foot house in Dunbar to 214 square feet on wheels. We put a free sign out in the driveway and put about 80% of our belongings out there and unloaded. But you know what, this is this is what you need to do when you decide that you want to work in one of the lowest paying professions in the world in one of the most expensive cities in the world. But you know what? I, I don't regret it at all. This, is, this allows us to live the dream. Uh, my partner, Ludo, over there, just gave notice at his job where he's been working very hard to support our expensive farming habit for the past three years. And uh, so we're all in now. We found that uh, this local food movement has a lot of benefits um, to the economy. I mean, every dollar that we spend on our equipment and seeds, it's almost all of it going right back into our local economy. It's great for the community. Um, so easy to get volunteers. We're on a bus route. We're five minutes from a SkyTrain. And so we have all of the, these people who are so enthusiastic and passionate about reconnecting with their food that are happy to come out and work with us in exchange for the experience and a little bit of food. It's really good for the environment. We're growing food that's seasonally and regionally appropriate. I mean, it's crazy to be bringing kale in from California. We should all have it in our backyards, but if you're not going to grow it, at least buy it from me. <laughs> I kind of feel guilty taking your money for kale, but I'll take it. <laughs> but this food is also fresher and more nutritious. Urban farming is really important. Most people in this world, most of us seven billion, live in cities. And so it really makes sense to be growing food. Is that like a signal or <laughs> like over? <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> so it really makes sense to be growing food where the people are, especially crops that are easy to grow in the cities. And let's free up some of that rural land to be growing things like animals and legumes and proteins for us. We should be growing kale out in Langley and grow that here. One minute. Okay. I'm going to have to go up with a bang here. So urban farming um yeah i really see it as a 
important part of our food system. I'd like to partner with rural farms. I mean, somebody that's gonna buy kale from me is also gonna buy chicken from the guy out in Abbotsford. So there's a real opportunity there for working with marketing and also with waste streams. Um, one of the best things I've found about urban farming is that I can take advantage of existing waste streams in the city, for example. We raised two pigs last summer entirely on city food waste. We turned garbage into bacon, you guys. <laughs> it just doesn't get any better than that. So rather than trucking animal feed in from the Fraser Valley and trucking the food waste back out to the Fraser Valley and then me buying it back in the form of compost, we were able to close that loop and keep it really close to home. So there's all kinds of opportunities. Like we, we picked up the whey from Avalon Dairy to feed to the pigs. We pick up coconut core from the mattress recycling place for bedding and all kinds of purposes on the farm. And so reducing the waste that we're producing is, is a really great opportunity for urban farms. And I just want to say that the only reason I'm up here today is not because I'm a great farmer. Uh, you notice I didn't like rattle off all the awards that I've won for being most awesome <laughs> farmer <laughs> of the year. <laughs> so that's not the story either. I'm here today because a community rallied behind me and said, yes, this is what we want. And they voted with their wallets and said, this is important to us. We want to have food security. We want this in our community. And that's why I'm here. I'm not going to be able to change this broken food system. And all the urban, all 17 urban farmers in Vancouver aren't going to be able to change this broken food system. It's really down to the consumer. As consumers, we have all the power. If, if you don't think that genetically modified food is a good thing, just stop buying those things. You know, if you want local food, if you want to reduce waste, go with your wallet. It's all up to you. And there's a bunch of us that will be here to, to produce it for you. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Richard.